Hi again and welcome to already the third Pixelmator tutorial in a series of tutorials here on Touch Plus where I will explain what you need to know to get started with Pixelmator. My name is Sebastian van der Velde and today we are going to take a look at the Effects Browser. We've already taken a short look at the Effects Browser in our previous tutorials, but today we will be taking a more in-depth look at its functions and contents. If you don't see the Effects Browser on your screen, then you can make it visible by hitting the key combination Command plus 3. Or you can go to the View menu and choose Show Effects. The Effects Browser contains all the filters and effects that are available in Pixelmator. Let's browse through them quickly by choosing all effects from the pull-down menu over here. As you see, there are a mind-boggling amount of effects available. Luckily, they are ordered in categories which makes it a little bit easier to find the type of effect you are looking for. Instead of browsing, we can also quickly select a category of effects from the pull-down menu. So when I want to do color adjustments, I can quickly choose color adjustments from the list to show only the color adjustment effects. If you have an idea of the name of the effect you want to apply but are not sure where to find it, you can go to the bottom of the effects browser palette and type the name of the effect you are looking for in the search field over here. I enter the word pixel in the search field so you can see that Pixelmator not only shows the effects by name, but also function. Here you see the honeycomb effect, which is a kind of pixelating effect as well. So also if you don't remember the name of the effect you are looking for exactly, you will still be able to find it by using the search field. Another handy feature in Pixelmator is that it displays the effects on the icon of the effect itself. So when I let my mouse pointer go from left to right over the icon of the honeycomb effect, we see what the effect looked like. Let's go through some of the filters you most likely will be using often in Pixelmator when doing image editing on photos. But first I'm going to duplicate my original image onto a new layer, so we can see the before and after effect. To duplicate a layer, we can select the layer we want to duplicate in the Layers palette and press Shift Command plus D, or we can drag the layer over the plus icon. Another option is contour clicking on the selected layer and choosing Duplicate from the menu that appears. For most photos, you most likely will start off in the Color Adjustment section, either to adjust the levels, brightness and contrast, or making minor adjustments to shadows and highlights. In the image over here, I want to bring out the sky a bit more and lighten the shadows a tiny bit. This we can do with the light and dark effect. To activate an effect, we can either double click on it or drag it from the browser onto the image. Here we will increase the light and shadow slider and as you can see, it affects the dark parts of our photo in such a way that they get slightly lighter and making the town square a bit brighter. When we increase the darkened highlight slider, we see that the buildings in the background and the sky get darker and the sky gets more visible. The next thing I want to do is bring more color into the sky. To do this, we first want to tell Pixelmator that we only want to apply our edits on the sky. Let's use the rectangular marquee tool for this. Since I want to make sure to select all of the sky, I will zoom out a bit by using the key combination Command and minus. Now I can start my selection outside of the image, making sure I have included all of the sky in my selection. It's okay to select some of the buildings as well. Here I've included a spear of the tower for example. To create a more smooth transition between the part that is going to be edited and the part that stays unselected, we're going to refine the selection. So we go to the edit menu and choose refine selection. Here we're going to use the feather slider to create a smooth transition. You see that we get a smooth transition from the red into the selected part of the image. Let's increase the size of the selection to remove the feathering around the borders of our image. Press the OK button when done. And now I can move the selection upwards so I don't change the color of the buildings in the background too much. Our selection is done and we can now apply a filter to it. In our case the colorize filter. This filter we also find in the color adjustment section. I want to make the sky more blue and therefore I move the color wheel to the blue side and adjust the saturation and lightness sliders.
you see that the change we do to the image get previewed right away and apply it when we click on the OK button. Now we can deselect our selection by pressing Command plus D on our keyboard. Let's zoom back in by pressing Command and plus. Now we might want to increase the sharpness of our image. This is not a color adjustment operation, so we need to browse to the Sharpen section in the Effects browser. We'll find three different methods for sharpening here. We can choose between regular sharpening, sharpening the edges, and the unsharp effect. The unsharp effect does not make our image unsharp as the name might suggest. It's actually a very customizable sharpening effect. We have for now seen effects that when we activate them show a little window where we can adjust the filter settings. But some effects don't have any settings at all and get applied right away. The edges sharpening effect is such an effect. When we double click on it, we see that our image gets slightly sharpened, but without any adjustments windows popping up. So if we want to sharpen the edges in our image more, we need to apply the effect again and again until we are satisfied with the result. In this case I find that the second edge sharpening is a bit too much, and to go back one step we can use undo by using the key combination command plus Z. Or we can go to the edit menu and choose undo edges. I am going to sharpen the whole image a tiny bit more by using the regular sharpen effect. So we double click on sharpen and adjust the slider. When done, we press OK. I am already quite satisfied with the result. Let's take a quick look at the before and after by hiding the layer we have worked on. Quite a big difference, don't you think? Let's give our folder a whole different kind of feel by applying one of the more advanced effects. We go to the blur section and choose the miniaturize filter. When we activate it, we see an adjustment window, but also some sort of rope coming from it attached to a dot in the middle of our image. We can move the dot around by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. What we are doing now is determining the center of our effect. There is another dot as well. A black one, and when we drag this dot around, we we'll see that we are adjusting the size and the angle of the effect. As you can see, the miniaturized effect, or for some better known as the tilt shift effect, makes our image look like a miniaturized version of the market square. We can increase the effect or decrease it by adjusting the blur and transition sliders. We can also choose to make the effect elliptical, and then you'll see that even more control points appear to adjust the effect. When we're satisfied, we apply the effect by hitting the OK button again. For now, we'll leave it at this. Let's take a look at the before and after again by hiding the layer we've worked on. As you can see, it is very easy to bring life into your images with the effects and filters in Pixelmator. We cannot go through all the filters available and therefore, I want to advise you to sit down and try them all out yourself. You can also go to the Pixelmator help section in the help menu. Here, under add effects, you'll find more information on what each effect does. Have fun and experiment with all the effects and filters in Pixelmator, and I hope to see you back for our next tutorial. Take care.